Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are creating this CRUD application using Next.js and AppWrite. Now in the previous video, we added the functionality of creating a new term. So if I click on add new, we can add a new interpretation over here. So if I just type testing and uh, testing over here as well. And uh, let's click on add interpretation. And we can see that the new term has been added over here. And then we can click on delete to delete this. And if I reload this page, we can see that it is deleted. Now in this video, we will add the functionality of editing these uh, terms. So let's get started. Right here, I'm in the source code and uh, let's go to the edit page. So we have already created this page for edit and we need to add the functionality of edit over here. So here we can see we have this folder called edit and in that we have this dynamic ID. So here we can see the ID is being displayed over here in the URL and the ID is based on the post that we click. So if we click on edit on this term right here, then it will have a different ID. So for each of these posts, we will have different IDs. So now the first thing we will do is we will populate these input fields with the details of this ID. So for example, if I click on edit on this term, Google Chrome, and if I click on edit over here, then here we should have the text Google Chrome displayed and then we'll be able to update it over here. So let's do that. Let's go back and uh, let's go to the edit page. So let's scroll up and uh, let's go ahead and create a state for storing the term and the interpretation. So if you go to the create page, here we can see that we have already created some code for that. So I'll just copy this code from here. So we need to have the form data state. We need to have the ease loading state and also the error state. So let's copy these three lines of code and let's paste it over here. And now we need to import use state. So let's import it from react. Now, since we are using use state, we need to change this component into a client component. So I'll just type use client over here. All right now let's go ahead and use a use effect and uh, this will be triggered after the page loads so let's go ahead and create an arrow function over here i need to have a dependency array over here for the next parameter so i'll just provide an empty array over here and here let's go ahead and create a function called fetch data and it will be an async function now here let's add a try catch block and uh, here in the catch, I'll just tap set error. And let's set the error to failed to load interpretation. And now in the try, let's go ahead and uh, tap const and I'll just call it response. And we need to hit this API route called API interpretations. And we need to pass this ID. So if you go over here to this route.ts file, which is inside this dynamic route. Here we can see that if you take a look at the get function, we are getting the params over here and from that we are getting the id and using the id we are fetching a specific interpretation so if we scroll up if you go to this function called fetch interpretation here we can see that we are getting the document with the help of the id so it will return this single interpretation over here so let's go back and uh, here let's type await fetch and uh, let's type API and I'll just use backticks for this. So let's type forward slash API forward slash interpretations forward slash and here we need to add the params. So now here we can see that we are getting the params over here. So if we go back here, we are getting the params in the URL. Now to get that, we need to write some code over here. So here we need to type params and uh, the type will be params with ID of type string. So this will be the type. All right now let's go ahead and type dollar symbol curly braces and let's type params dot ID. So this will make a fetch call to this API interpretations forward slash the ID, which we see over here. And it will get a response of that specific term. So now let's go ahead and type if the result is not okay then we'll just throw a new error and uh, i'll just type failed 
to fetch interpretation and if everything is okay then we'll just go ahead and store the json inside a constant and i'll just call it data equals await response which you are getting from here so let's type response dot json and now we simply need to update this form data state so let's type set form data and here let's type term so we need to have a term in here and for the term we'll just type data dot term and then we need to have the interpretation so let's type interpretation and let's set it to data dot interpretation so now this will store the data that we get from this api call to this state and uh, now let's scroll down and here let's go ahead and add the value of this state so here let's go ahead and type value equals form data dot term and here for the text area let's type value equals form data dot interpretation and let's also add an on change listener over here so here we need to type on change and uh, we'll create a function called handle input change and here also let's type on change handle input change and i think we have created this function in the create page so i'll just copy this function from here and let's go ahead and paste it over here and let's import change event from react right now to display the data over here we need to call this function fetch data so let's call it over here fetch data and now let's go back and let's reload this page and uh, the data is not being displayed over here so let's go ahead and console.log this data and let's see what we get so let's tap console.log data and let's go back and uh, let's open the console and I'll just reload this page and uh, here let's see what data we are getting so we are getting interpretation and in that we are getting the term and the interpretation so here we need to type data dot interpretation dot term and we need to do the same for here so data dot interpretation dot interpretation so now let's go back and let's reload this page and now we can see that the data is being populated over here so let's go back and let's open another term so let's open this one right here so i'll just click on edit and here we can see we have google chrome and a web browser displayed over here so the data is being fetched correctly all right now let's go ahead and add the functionality of editing this data so let's go back and uh, let's create a function called const handle submit equals async and uh, here for the argument i'll just give it a type of react dot form event and here the first thing we will do is prevent the default behavior so let's tap e dot prevent default and let's go back to the create page and let's see whether we can copy anything from here so i think we can copy almost all of this code so let's copy this and let's go back to the edit page and i'll just paste it over here and uh, here we have the router so we need to create a router over here so i'll just tap const router equals use router and let's import it from next navigation and uh, then here for the fetch call we need to change this to the edit method so here for the method we need to type put and uh, here we need to pass the param so here if you go to edit so here we can see we have the put method and for that we need to send the request and also the params in which we are sending the id so let's change this into backticks and here let's pass the param so let's have forward slash dollar symbol curly braces params dot id and then here in the error let's type failed to update interpretation and i will just go back to the home page if it is successful and here i'll just leave all this code as it is and let's scroll down and here we need to create an on submit and let's call this function called 
handle submit and let's scroll down and here we need to change the text of the button so I just copy the code from here so I will just copy this line of code and I'll just paste it over here and I'll just change this to updating and here let's type update interpretation and let's also add the error message so let's copy this line of code from here and after the form we need to add the error I think that's it with the code of the edit page so let's see whether it works so let's go back and here I'll just type updated and here also let's type updated and let's click on update interpretation and here we can see that the data has been updated so the edit method is working correctly let's update this one right here so let's type updated I'll just remove all of this and uh, click on update and we can see we have this error message so let's bring this back in and let's type updated and let's click on update and we can see that it is also updated so everything is working all right and with that we have completed creating this CRUD application using Next.js and AppWrite. Alright so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.